Halleluja. 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 My dear young brothers and sisters, the gospel today speaks to us about the Last Supper. After having given his own body and his own blood to the disciples in the form of bread and wine, Jesus said, do this in memory of me. So here we are to remember because Jesus asked us to remember. Do this in memory of me. What do we remember? We remember how our God offered himself for us. He gave his own body to be broken and eaten. He gave his own blood to be shed and to be drunk by us. His own body and blood he gave us. And this is what we remember. A great memory indeed. Why great memory? Because this is the highest form of love. What is the measure of love? There are many ways to show a love to others. I can go and tell him. I can go and tell her, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You can go on saying it. That's one way. Another way, you can give gifts to those you love to show that you love them, you love her. But the real measure of love is the sacrifice that we take for the person that we love. If that is the real measure of love, the ultimate, the ultimate measure of love is what Jesus did on the cross. He offered himself to be betrayed. He offered himself to be condemned, to be flogged at the pillar, and to be crucified, and to be buried. This is the ultimate measure of love. And this is what we remember when we come together at this altar. How much I am loved. How precious you and I in the eyes of our God. How dear I am to my God. This is what we remember when we stand at this altar. Often when we say, God... Jesus offered himself for us in the plural. It sounds a little impersonal, right? Because in English, the plural signifies a crowd, an impersonal crowd. That's why St. Paul wanted to put it in the singular, personal singular. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, St. Paul said, My Jesus offered himself for me. For me, every one of us should be able to say it. Every one of us should be able to feel it. It is for me that Jesus offered himself on the cross. That's why St. Augustine, understanding the mind of St. Paul, said, even if I were the only human person on the face of the earth, Jesus would have come down and died for me. He died for me. It's a beautiful um, hymn. I'm sure you have heard this. I heard that hymn yesterday being sung here. The hymn is called Above All. Have you heard this hymn? Above All. The hymn, the hymn proceeds narrating the different moments in the passion and death of Jesus. How Jesus was betrayed by Judas, denied by Simon Peter, condemned by Pilate, flogged at the pillar, and crucified on Calvary, and buried in the tomb. After having narrated all these different steps, 
the hymn climaxes in a beautiful little verse above all he thought of me above all he thought of me that little verse explains to us the whole meaning of the suffering and death of jesus for me when jesus was condemned by pilate i was there in his mind when he was flogged at the pillar i was there in his mind when nails were driven into his palms i was there my name was there on his lips you know why he offered every bit of pain for my salvation that i may not perish because that is the command the mission he received from the father john 316 god so loved the world that he sent his only son to die that we may not perish jesus wanted to make sure that you my brother you my sister you and i we should not perish in anything that happens to us it is for this that jesus offered himself to be condemned often we imagine that the cross was thrust upon him that's not true jesus said john 10 chapter 10 verse 18 jesus said no one snatches my life away from me i willingly offer my life it was a willing a loving offering his life on the cross that you and i we may be saved how much i am loved how precious i am how dear i am to my jesus when we remember this the supreme way that we are loved there are other memories that hurt us every day like every day we are being hurt we are being isolated by our friends we are being misunderstood we are being deceived by those we trusted we are being humiliated we are being insulted we fail in our attempts and we feel so small in front of others all these hurts memories of being hurt these memories occur to us every day it is with all these memories that we come to the altar when all these memories burn within us and we begin to feel so small so devalued why are we sad when someone shouts at me when someone shouts at me i'm sad because i'm devalued in his eyes in her eyes i have no value i have no worth when i fail in my project i feel so humiliated why because i am devalued i lost my worth and this is happening to us all the time we lose our value we lose our worth it is in this context that we come to the holy eucharistic celebration here we remember how much we are loved how much we are cared for how great we are in the eyes of our god how much my god cares for me because he offered himself to be crucified that i may not perish that i may be saved this memory in this great memory that we celebrate all the painful memories all the painful memories are washed away and this is what must happen in every eucharistic sacrifice that's why we say the holy mass is the most effective inner healing service we are being healed of all the hurts we are being healed of all the offenses we are being healed of every moment that we were hurt this healing takes place at this altar hallelujah shall all of us say hallelujah, hallelujah. shall we raise the hands and say hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 my dear sisters and brothers and therefore what are we to do the one thing we must do when we come for the eucharistic celebration 
is to offer ourselves. I must offer myself. It is the self-offering of Jesus that we celebrate. With the self-offering of Jesus, you and I, we must offer ourselves, offer ourselves on the altar. There is a beautiful moment in the Holy Mass, the moment of offertory. You know that moment of offertory? The priest takes a piece of bread and keeps it on the paten and lifts it up on the altar. Then he takes a little wine, pours it into the chalice and adds a drop of water. Once again, lifts up that chalice on the altar. A moment, a moment a high priest, Jesus is asking us, my children, I'm offering myself to my heavenly father. Have you anything to offer? That's the time you must search your hearts. Is there anything hurting in my heart? That's the time you must search your soul. Is there anything sinful in my soul? That's the time you must be searching your body. Is there anything aching and ailing in my body? That's the time you must be searching your relationships. Are my relationships strained? And that's what we must offer every strain in our relationships, everything wrong in our life, everything sad, everything hurting, every painful memory we offer together with that bread, together with that wine. You know, that piece of bread kept on the patent is very light, very thin. That thin piece of bread must become heavy heavy with the heaviness of your heart all that makes your heart heavy all that makes your life burdened all that makes you tired must be offered with that piece of bread with that wine the chalice is a big chalice but what is poured into the chalice is only a bit of wine and one drop of water but the chalice must be filled filled with your, with your tears, with every drop of tears in your eyes, it must flow, must be offered to this altar, everything that is sad, everything that is sick, everything that is sinful, everything that is hurting must be offered with that piece of bread, with the wine on the altar. And then comes... The moment, the moment of consecration. You know what? Everything offered in the hands of Jesus. The altar is the open arms of Jesus. Everything offered in the hands of Jesus on the altar is accepted in the heart of Jesus. Everything accepted in the heart of Jesus is anointed with the Holy Spirit and is transformed. You know what happened in Bethany, Martha and Mary, the two sisters, they had a brother by name Lazarus. Lazarus was sick. Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus. By the time Jesus came, it was too late. Lazarus was dead, buried four days in the tomb. Martha and Mary came crying, Master, you should have been here. If you were here, my brother would not have died. And we are told Jesus began to grieve. There was grief in the heart of Jesus. Great sadness in the heart of Jesus. And his eyes were filled with tears. Jesus began to cry. The big question, where did Jesus get all that grief? All that grief is what Jesus took from the heart of Martha and Mary. All the tears that Jesus was shedding is what Jesus took from the eyes of Martha and Mary. And Jesus took it all into his heart, into himself. And Jesus exclaimed, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out alive. Same way, at the altar, all our grief, all our anger, all our sadness, all our tears, Jesus takes it all into his heart. In the heart of Jesus, all our tears, all our grief, all our anger, all our sin, all our sickness, 
is all anointed by the Holy Spirit and transformed. That is what happens at consecration. At consecration, Jesus takes that piece of bread and Jesus says, this is my body. Jesus takes that cup of wine and Jesus says, this is my blood to be shed for you. What God says comes true. In the beginning of the world, God said, let there be light. And the thickest of darkness was dispelled from the face of the earth. Jesus said, Lazarus come out and the dead man came out alive. Jesus said, be calm and the raging sea and the roaring waves fell at the feet of Jesus. At the altar, Jesus speaks. What you hear is the voice of the priest. But the priest at the altar in the vestments is the visible symbol of the invisible presence of our high priest, Jesus Christ. What you hear is the voice of the priest, but it is God speaking. Jesus, our high priest speaking, this is my body to be broken for you. This is my blood to be shed for you. The bread becomes the body of Jesus. The wine becomes the blood of Jesus. We call it by a big name, transubstantiation. The substance changes. It was bread. Even now, it looks like bread. Round in shape, white in color, light in weight. But beyond the size and the shape and the color, the bread has become the body of Jesus. The wine has become the blood of Jesus. But together with the bread and wine, everything we offered is also accepted. It's also anointed with the Holy Spirit. It's also transformed. What did you offer? You offered your hot temper. That hot temper is accepted in the heart of Jesus. That hot temper is anointed by the Holy Spirit. That hot temper is transformed. It's transubstantiated. That hot temper is transformed into gentleness. You offered your sadness, your sorrow. Jesus accepts your sorrow. Jesus anoints your sorrow with the Holy Spirit. Your sorrow changes substance. It becomes rejoicing. You offered that anger or that irresistible urge to drink or whatever other sin, you offered it with that piece of bread. That urge of sin is accepted in the heart of Jesus anointed by the Holy Spirit and is transformed. You offered your sickness, the pain on your hands, the pain on your back. Jesus accepts that pain, anoints it with the Holy Spirit and that pain is transformed into healing, a great transformation that takes place at the altar. You know, most of the major healings in this retreat center take place during the Holy Eucharistic celebration. A healing could be manifested later in the Eucharistic adoration, but it's here in the sacramental change that healings take place because we offer our aches and our ailments. Here we get the assurance. Everything offered is accepted, is anointed by the Holy Spirit and is transformed. And that is what you get back in communion. In communion, you get the sacred host. That's the body of Jesus. Together with the body of Jesus, all that you offered also comes back to you. Your sadness comes back to you, but not as sadness, but as accepted in the hands of Jesus, anointed by the Holy Spirit and transubstantiated that is what you get back. You offered your sickness. Your sickness comes back to you, but not as sickness, but as accepted in the heart of Jesus, anointed by the Holy Spirit and transformed in the power of the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, every time we take part in the Eucharistic celebration, everything offered is accepted, is anointed by the Holy Spirit is transformed.
I remember some years ago, a young man came here. He was an engineering student. He grew up in the Gulf. After his schooling in the Gulf country, his parents brought him here and got him admission in a very prestigious engineering college. And they also got him a little flat to live in. All the conveniences were given to him. The parents went back and sack full of money came in every other month. When money came in, friends gathered. Where dead bodies are, vultures fly down. Friends gathered. And the friends led him astray. He hardly attended the classes in the college. First year was getting over and he did not appear for any of the exams. He was busy with his friends in all sinful, immoral ways of living. And then came the second year, almost the middle of second year. The principal called him and asked him, my friend, where are you? You were not seen in the college. Where are you? Here is the attendance register. Look at this. You did not complete any of the papers of the first year. It is second year now. I'm sorry. I can't allow you to continue in this college. He told me, Father, when the principal said to this, this to me, like a lightning struck, I was confronted by the sinful waste I made of my life. And in tears, he begged the principal, Sir, please do not dismiss me. I wasted all the time, all the opportunities, all the money, all my talents. And above all, I wasted the loving trust that my parents put in me. When my parents come to know that I am dismissed from the college, that would break their hearts. Please do not dismiss me. And he said, I understand the terrible mistake I have done. I will not continue to do this anymore. I will not miss any class anymore. That's my promise to you. Then he said, all the papers of the first year and second year I will complete by the end of this year. Please, sir, for the sake of my parents, give me one more chance. The principal laughed and said, well, you say great things, but I don't believe you will be able to do it. Your friends are still there to lead you astray. And the memories of a careless life is still there, are still there in your heart. And I don't believe this. What do you say you would do? But the principal said, well, I give you one more chance. And I want to see, I will monitor personally the way you come to the class, the way you do the exams. And he said, thank you, sir. I will try my best. He went straight to um, the chapel in the college campus. He wept his heart out, holding on to the crucifix. He understood the terrible sin he committed. What a sinful waste he made of his life. An elderly priest came there. He confessed. The priest told him, my son, don't worry. The heart of God was always open to you. Now that your heart is open to God, God will do the wonder in your life. Nothing is impossible to God. I told him, my friend, what that elderly priest said is what I also want to tell you. Nothing is impossible to God. Open your heart to the Lord. The Lord will take charge of your life. And the Lord will do the impossible. Because Jesus has said it. Nothing is impossible to God. Well, I told him to enter into the retreat. The first two days, he was very distracted. The memories, the memories, sinful memories of the past. But then the third day, 
during holy mass something beautiful happened he was in a trance later he told me father in the offertory i offered myself together with that piece of bread i offered myself in the hands of god every sin i committed the sinful waste i made of my life i offered with that sacred host in the hands of god everything i remembered i continued to offer and then came the consecration something something significant happened during consecration jesus he said father i could not see the priest anymore it was the high priest jesus in the high priestly vestments jesus holding me close to him and jesus looking at me and jesus saying this is me this is my body this is mine he said father i could see the mess the sinful waste i made of my life in the hands of jesus and jesus making me his own it's like whole sin of my past entered into the heart of jesus and jesus looks at me and jesus says all that i am all that i made of my life is what jesus is this is me this is mine this is my body he said he could not hear anything else he could not see anything else the words began to echo and re-echo in his heart jesus has made me his own all my sin jesus has taken into his heart all the waste i made of my life the lord is taken into his heart the lord has made it all his own he felt i'm totally changed i'm not me anymore it is jesus living in me what saint paul said it's not i but jesus who lives in me then came the time of the holy communion the sacred host was placed in his mouth on the tongue and he said father i felt a flame a flame of fire and that flame flowing down my throat into my heart and spreading all over my body it's like i was i was in fire on fire fire burning me burning away everything passed i remembered what happened to the apostles on the day of pentecost the day of pentecost the holy spirit came upon them and they were all all in flame on fire they became new creations totally new totally renewed in the holy spirit that was the experience he had a burning sensation but he said father a very pleasant burning sensation he told me father my jesus has taken charge of my life my jesus has taken care of every sin i committed i'm not the old person anymore i'm a new creation renewed in the holy spirit i told him my friend don't forget this experience go back to your college and do not miss holy mass he used to ring me up every other week and he used to tell me um, of his experience he said father every other day i would feel a temptation to go back to the old ways a friend would invite him a friend would laugh at him another friend would tell him come let's enjoy life a temptation he said father i would keep that temptation in my heart and i would wait for the next day holy mass i offer that temptation on the altar there were times he said when i found my studies very hard because one and a half years he hardly read anything he hardly studied anything he hardly attended the classes studies looked very hard he went for a tuition and when studies became very hard to me i would feel like giving up i would become desperate i would hate myself i would feel very uncomfortable the memories of the past would come back to me 
He said, Father, I would wait for the next day Holy Mass to offer all the memories of the past on the altar again. Every time he did it, the same experience, the pleasant burning sensation, burning him, sanctifying him, making him a new creation. And to cut a long story short, at the end of the fourth year, he came out as the first rank holder in that college. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, we are not meant to be losers. This world could lead us to make our lives a waste, a sinful waste, but God wants us to be winners. God wants us to be winners. And that's what Jesus instituted this sacrament for, the Holy Eucharist, to accept us as we are. And we are, we are given the privilege to offer ourselves in the hands of God. And we are given the assurance everything offered is accepted, anointed by the Holy Spirit, and is transformed. Thank you.